at the gallop. Fort Laramie, starring Raymond Burr as Captain Lee Quince. Specially transcribed tales of the dark and tragic ground of the wild frontier. The saga of fighting men who rode the rim of empire. And the dramatic story of Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. If you just squeeze the trigger and hold steady on your target, your wrist won't fly around so. But I'm not a cavalry lieutenant. I'm just his wife. Oh, I, I know. Oh, my. I didn't know anyone else was watching. Well, Captain Quince. As you were, Lieutenant. Thank you, sir. This is my wife, Hester. It's Captain Quince, honey. Ma'am. How do you do, Captain? Hester, don't, uh, she don't take to a pistol, but I'm learning her all I can. It's slow going. Teaching, Blade. Teaching, not learning. Teaching, teaching. I was at school, Mom, back home, Captain. And I must say, Blade doesn't take to words any better than I take to a pistol. <laughs> well, then you're both teaching, not learning. <laughs> <laughs> but that's just it. Just it. I try to tell her maybe she's got more need for a pistol out here for when, for when words don't matter. Well, I just don't see the need, Captain. Well, that's too bad. Seeing it or not. There's need. Now, you mean to tell me that your wife knows about pistols and rifles and riding horses and all kinds of men folk carrying <laughs> on? I should have warned you, Captain. My hash, she riles easy. Well, I'm not rile, Bladestock. I'm asking, that's all. If I had a wife, ma'am, she'd know all I know about living out here. And pistols and rifles and riding are part of the living. And I try to tell her, Captain. I do try. Well, I declare I am not stupid. But everything you say, it's not womanly. It's not womanly country. Meaning women folk don't belong out here? Well, it depends on the women folk, ma'am. I'd say you have to want to belong. Afternoon to you. Afternoon, Captain. Well, I like that. He as much as said I didn't belong oh, out no, here. No, only one time. By the mane, ma'am. You just can't get nowhere from no horse hanging on to his mane that way. I've got to hang on to something. Well, but... You just don't ride side saddle, Sergeant. Now, that's a fact. Oh, you looking for me, Captain? Oh, just passing by, Sergeant. Afternoon, Miss Mead. Good afternoon, Captain. I guess I'm quite a spectacle, aren't I? <laughs> oh, you look fine, ma'am. I'd like to believe that. I don't know who's getting the worst of it, the horse or me or Sergeant Gorse. Seems to me you're all bearing up well. Uh, the captain's a sight better teaching women folk to ride than I am, Mrs. Mead. I tell you the truth, I'm no hand at this side saddle business. I, uh, I got business with the major myself, or I'd sure... Or help... you'd sure think of some other reason to be moving out, wouldn't you, Captain? <laughs> well, yes, ma'am, I guess it would. <laughs> I don't blame you, either of you. And, Sergeant, if you can find some unsuspecting trooper and pass this duty on to him, you have my leave. And I won't be the least bit offended. Oh, no, ma'am. Thanks just the same. You understand, it ain't you, Mrs. Mead. You're just as, as, as willing as can be. It's just... It's a... just my petticoats. That's what it is. <clears throat> well, now, ma'am... I, I guess the Major will wonder what's become of me. <laughs> now I've embarrassed you. Oh, help me down, Captain, before I break the post morale completely. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, Captain. Uh, don't mention it. You dropped something there, ma'am. Not a petticoat, I hope. Uh, this, uh, this pistol, Miss Mead. Oh, thank you, Captain. 
You always carry it? Oh, Jim would scalp me if I didn't. And he should. I know. And I'm a good shot, too. Miss Mead, have you met up with Mrs. Stalker yet? Mrs. Stalker? Oh, Blade Stalker's wife. Yes, you know her? Well, just to speak to at the Sutler's, I, I don't really know her. She and the lieutenant moved on to the post just last week. If you ever do get to know her, you might show her you carry a pistol and tell her why. She doesn't know why? Well, Blade's doing his best, but she don't see the need. I'll make it a point, Captain, but I can't understand Blade. He was at Fort Phil Kearney with us. Under Fetterman? I thought she was there, too, but maybe not, though. Because the women at Kearney saw the need. Fast. You want any of these boxes open, Mrs. Stocker? Oh, now, don't you bother with that, Lieutenant Seibert. Just moving them in for me is a big help. Glad to do it. Ah, oh, I declare you think they give a body time to move into their quarters. Here it is, less than a week, and Blade's already drawn officer of the day. <laughs> that's the army for you, Mrs. Stocker. You draw the duty, you do it, that's all. Now, you're not going to start lecturing me, too, Lieutenant Seibert's. Sorry, ma'am, I didn't mean it to sound that way. Oh, don't mind me. Blade says I rile easy, and I guess I do. But he's all so new to me. And folks from Captain Quinn's up and down have been mighty free with their advice. Well, they're just trying to help. Well, I'm sure of that. But there's help and help, if you know what I mean. Yes, ma'am. Now you, Lieutenant Seibert, helping me move my books and belongings in, I can appreciate that more. Books, huh? No wonder those boxes are so heavy. Mm Mm-hmm, my school books. I taught the grades back home before I married Blade. Teaching was my whole life, till him... I tell you, I couldn't leave my books behind me. I just couldn't. I can understand that. You can? Yes, ma'am. I brought a lot of books out myself from West Point. I uh, attended the military academy. My goodness, a real West Pointer. I declare. Uh, Mrs. Stocker, are there any more boxes of yours out there on the wagon? Well, not exactly. I, I mean, not on the wagon. But there are more boxes somewhere. Can you forgive me, Lieutenant Seibert's? They're clear down at the post office. Now, I know you don't have the time to go all that way. I'll be glad to, ma'am. Well, I'll be more than grateful. I'll make the nicest cherry tarts, Lieutenant. I'll see you get some soon. I'd like that, ma'am. I won't be long. Anybody home? Oh, well, yes. Well, come in, won't you? I'm Liz Mead, two doors down. Well, I've seen you at the Sutler's, haven't I? Yes. Oh, I- I'm Hess Stocker. Well, I know. Is it all right to sit on one of these boxes? Well, I'm afraid they're all I have to offer right now. I feel like I know you. Uh, weren't you at Fort Kearney with Blade? No. We've just been married a month. I've never been anywhere with Blade but here. Oh? Well, my husband knew Blade better than I did, but there's sort of a link between anyone who served there. Fort Kearney? It's up on the old Bozeman Trail. It's closed now. That's all Indian territory since the treaty, but I... You must be mistaken about Blade, Mrs. Mead. He's never mentioned Fort Kearney to me. But I'm sure he was there. There were five companies of infantry. Oh, your husband's an infantry officer? Uh Uh-huh. Well, that explains it, then. You must be wrong about Blade. He's in the cavalry. There was a company of cavalry, too, under Captain Fetterman. Well, it's not important, of course. But I know Blade would have told me. Of course, I'm sure he would. And as you say, it's not important. Well, can I help you with anything? No, thanks kindly. My goodness, I almost forgot. I brought you a little present. Well, aren't you nice? I I have a practical turn of mind. It's something no army wife should be without. What? Well, these are uh, cartridges. I just assumed yours was a thirty-eight, like mine. Well, I don't know. You know about firearms? A woman has to, out here. Well, I don't understand. A big post like Fort Laramie 
with all these men here to protect us. But the men aren't always here, Mrs. Tucker. My husband and most of the infantry are out now. These are the facts of the West. Mm -hmm. Many of the Indians are hostile, and the fate of white women in their hands... Well, it's best to know how to defend yourself. You've had to defend yourself? Many times. At Kearney, the women held the fort in one Indian raid with less than a dozen men to help. Were any of the women killed? Some. And some carried off by the Sioux. Dying's easier. I'm a school teacher, Mrs. Mead. I want to make my way out here teaching the young that you don't have to kill to get along. I think schools are more important than guns. We can use the schools, Mrs. Stalker, and... And there's not a woman out here who won't want to help you get them. But till you do, you have to live. I guess I can defend myself if I have to. It isn't always a case of defending yourself. Sometimes a woman has to make a choice, a quick choice. Of living or dying? Of living or enduring. Mrs. Stocker, don't you know what happens to a woman if a hostile carries her off? I think maybe that would be something for Blade to tell me, Mrs. Mead. Yes. Yes, you're right. And when he tells you that, maybe he'll tell you what the pistol is for. Really. See you a minute, Captain. Uh, sure. Well, what's on your mind? Well, uh, Captain, maybe uh, maybe just off the side here. It's, it's kind of personal, sir. All right. Would you be willing to do some talking for me, Captain? I just can't seem to get that job done with Hess, using firearms and all of I me. Mean. You sure you're trying hard at it? I don't know what that means. I'm trying. I've been trying, Captain. There's a lot I told her, and a lot of times. A lot you haven't told her. Well, it looks like a big fort, Laramie. I'd have swore I wouldn't know anyone here from the old days. Sure didn't reckon to run into Miss Mead again. She told you, huh? It's a secret you were at Fort Kearney? Well, no, not that. It's... Well, they're just hard words to say to Hess, Captain. It all... Happened kind of quick, like our marrying and, and moving out here. I know Miss Mead didn't aim to, but she sure didn't do me no good bringing up Carney to Hess. Miss Mead didn't get very far with your wife, and I can't talk to her about Fort Carney. I wasn't there. But we only been married a month. We don't even know each other right good yet. Now, well, how, how are you going to say to a brand new bride that she ain't the first? I mean, you was married before. I don't know that. But you're the one to tell her, if she's told. Blade, what's the matter with you? There's a lot, I guess. First you say, will I talk to your wife about her need for a pistol, then you drag Fort Kearney into it. Now you're talking about you were married Well, before. don't you see, Captain, they're all the same thing in a way. It don't come easy to give Hess a pistol and tell her to use it on herself if it looks like she's going to get took by Indians. Uh, Captain, I've done it before at Kearney. And that wife had to use that pistol on herself. I, I didn't know that, Blade. I don't think Mrs. Mead knew it either. I'm sorry. No, no, Captain. No, no. Sorry's no matter. It's not your fault. It... Captain, can't you see? I done it once. And it, it don't set well a second time. It just might go hard with a man. You... Ever said it all out this way before, Blade? No, sir, not out loud. You might feel some better. Now it's said. Yeah, I reckon I might. Obliged to you for listening anyways, Captain. Uh, Blade. Sir? You'll want to say something to her tonight. Tonight? We're moving out tomorrow. <laughs> Now, 
Why can't I do that? Oh, Mrs. Mead. Do what? Mount like that. I'll bet you wear fewer petticoats than I do. Might be I do. Sergeant Gore says you ride beautifully. I know some about horses. <laughs> well, I'm learning. Mind if I ride with you this morning? Oh, well, I'm going quite a way. That is, I have some business to tend to. All right. I, I, I just thought with Blade gone a week now, you might be wanting some company. I hope you're carrying your pistol. I'm carrying it. That's good. Well, have a nice ride. I expect to, Mrs. Mead. I'm going over to the Indian Agency. Talk to the agent about setting up a school. You're not riding to the agency alone. Now, don't start telling me the agency Indians are hostiles. Blade told me different. But it's ten miles from Fort Laramie, and you don't know what you'll run into between here and there. I reckon I can take care of myself. After all, Mrs. Mead, I'm carrying the pistol. Not that I'll have a minute's need for it. I guess you could do with the water. More of a ride than I thought. Oh, no. Miss Docker? Miss Docker, are you all right? I'm fine. But for you coming on me this way... Do you know how near I came to firing on you? I've been trying to get within earshot of you all the way from the fort. This is a very stupid thing riding off alone this way. Well, I might have shot you. Seems to me you're the stupid one. I suppose I am, but, but, but you've got to realize the dangers out here, Miss Docker. At least with the two of us, we're protection to... Wait. What? Wait, it's over there. In that brush near the trees. Something big. Oh, how can you tell? I don't see anything. It moves big. Timber wolf, maybe a, a wildcat. I hope not. I hope that's all it is. You're just trying to frighten me. Hold your pistol steady toward that big tree. And be quiet. <gasps> it's an Indian. You're not afraid, Hess. Pick up your pistol and show him you're not afraid. Oh, yeah, I, I don't let him. Don't let Stop. Him. Stop where you are. <laughs> We're not afraid of you. If you have something to say, say it and go away. You understand this pistol? Go on. Go away. Leave us alone or I'll fire. You understand? One more step, and I'll fire. Is he dead? Did you... Did you kill him? He's dead. No, he wouldn't, Hess. Not for a long time. Let's go home. Reckon she's hurt somehow, Captain? No, I don't see how. You want I should go with you? I'd be proud to. Oh, uh, I'll do it, Gorse. It's my place. Yes, sir. I sure feel mighty bad for her. Yeah. Her being so new here, not taking to the life easy. 
I might just look in on her tomorrow. Lend a hand, maybe. Yeah. Yeah, you do that, Gorse. Well, night, Captain. Good night, Gorse. Miss Tucker. Oh, why, Captain Quince? You're about the last person I expected to see. Oh, is Blade with you? Can I come in, ma'am? Oh, well, of course you can. Please come in. I don't know where my manners are. I guess it was seeing you, and if it was anyone, I, I thought it would be Blade. You... Want to sit down, Miss Tucker? You've come about Blade, haven't you? Something's happened to Blade. He's dead. He's dead? Sometimes it's better hearing it right out. You want to sit down now, ma'am? Yes. Yes, I think I do. Would you like a drink of something, or do you want to hear about it? I want to hear. It happened quick, Miss Docker, and if it's got to happen, it's best quick. He didn't know? He didn't suffer? No, oh, ma'am. One shot, clean, that did it. I don't know what it'd mean, but Blade would want it just that way. I guess he would. <sighs> Captain, we... We didn't even know each other yet. There hasn't been time. Yeah, he said that too. That night before he left, he kept trying to tell me something. He'd try, and then he'd fret a while, and then he'd try again. Finally, he just threw that blame pistol on the dresser, and he said to me, Take it, Hess, honey, and know how much I love you. That's the last words he said to me. I think he was trying to tell me something, Captain. I think he told you something, ma'am. Know how much I love you. Oh, Blade. Blade, honey. Miss Tucker, if I can do anything... You can go. Leave me be now. I want it that way for now. You'll be all right, alone? I gotta find that out for myself, Captain. Yes, ma'am. I'm... Uh... I'm right sorry, Miss Stockham. Oh, Captain? Yes? You brought him back, did you? Back to the fort? We brought him back. I'm glad. Night, Miss Stockham. <laughs> Captain Quint. Oh, good morning, Sergeant. You heard about her, Captain? Mrs. Stocker? What about her? She's gone. Gone? Where? How? I went over there right after Reveille, like I planned last night. I couldn't raise her, so I figured she was sleeping heavy. On the way back, the corporal of the guard told me some woman rode through the main gate not ten minutes ago. Why didn't he stop her? Well, he didn't know her, or what's happened to her or anything. Captain Quint, he knew one thing. She was carrying a pistol like she knew what to do with it. You said ten minutes? Yes, sir. You gonna find her, Captain?
I was too scared to fire it before. You all right, ma'am? I'm all right. I aim to use it, Captain. Turn it on myself. I was too scared to do that, too. No need for that. No matter. I couldn't do it. It's a pretty morning. Got no right to be. But it's pretty. It's new. It's a beginning. That's always pretty. We were beginning, Blade and me. And I was beginning on my own. To get a feel like I belonged out here. But you're right, Captain. It's not womanly country. It still depends on the woman. I'm a schoolmom. Teaching was my life, till Blade. I reckon it's my life again now. You still got a life. Or don't you see the need? Need? Schools. We can use them out here, on the post, on the agency. Someone has to start them. Someone has to want to. Someone who could do some learning while they were teaching. I might fit the bill, Captain. I got a lot of learning ahead of me. Fort Laramie is produced and directed by Norman MacDonald and stars Raymond Burr as Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry, with Vic Perrin as Sergeant Gorse. The script was specially written for Fort Laramie by Kathleen Height, with sound patterns by Bill James and Ray Kemper, musical supervision by Amerigo Marino. Featured in the cast were Harry Bartell as Lieutenant Seibertz, with Gene Bates, Lynn Allen, and Lawrence Dobkin. Company, attention! Dismiss! Next week, another transcribed story of the Northwest Frontier and the troopers who fought under Lee Quince, Captain of Cavalry. Each of us has an important part to play in defending our own locality as well as our country as a whole. If Los Angeles, Chicago, or Cincinnati is bombed, it will directly affect every farmer in North Dakota or miner in Kentucky. Won't you give a few hours of each week as a ground observer or a worker in a filter center to help your country? Become a Ground Observer Corps volunteer in your community. Write or telephone your nearest Civil Defense Center or write to Ground Observer Corps, Air Force, Washington, D.C.